this young German shepherd has come to me with some reactivity issues we need to work through. Now, as in all sessions I do with reactive dogs, the first thing is is to decipher where the reactivity is coming from. Is it a fear-based reactivity? Is it frustration? Or is it pure aggression or protection? That is the start of the session. Now, what you see me do here is uh, introduce the dog to a slip lead, but more than anything, the reactions you see in how the dog are, reactions you get generally from a dog, it's first time being away from the owner and with a stranger taking the lead, and the dog tends to play up a bit about it, and they're not used to it. Now, the reason I'm doing this, the dog's also muzzled. The reason I'm doing this is to essentially take some confidence away from the dog to think it can attack me or either protect its owner or basically play up. So by me taking the lead, it shows confidence in myself as a person and can put the dog on the back foot a little bit. Now, sometimes this can cause a little bit of stress to the dog, and I understand that. Um, people may have... Um, their own opinions about that. But I think we need to understand if you want to work through these problems, there is going to be an element of stress or uncomfortableness for the dog, but we will work through that and we need to make this dog realise that um, he's not going to get the reactions he normally gets, which is when he growls or barks, people jump backwards. And that is the purpose of having a muzzle on a dog. It takes the power away from the dog. It allows me as a handler to stand my ground. You will see later in the video where the dog has a little lunge at me and I jump back, catches me by surprise. Um, that's to be expected. Sometimes you get caught out. But essentially what it does, it, it gives me the confidence. Now what I'm doing here is really just while I'm talking to the owner, letting the dog just take its time to relax, decompress, whatever word you want to use, and and sort of just deal with the situation and figure out what's going on. You can see it's like, what is going on here? Why am I here? Why is Dad over there? So that's the first step. And this is something I suggest to a lot of people with dogs that do have sort of fear-based reactivity. The way you're going to get through these problems is you need to get this dog with other people and other dogs. And the way you do that safely is obviously with good equipment, with a slip lead, with a muzzle. You can see a bit of frustration here from, from the young dog. And all I'm doing basically is really no training. I'm just moving the dog around, trying to touch here and there, get some connection to the dog. But again, you're seeing me not having to jump backwards. And that is why we have the muzzle. It sets me up to be successful. I'm giving a little bit of a stare here on purpose because the idea of using the muzzle is it allows me to test the dog in different ways, test its triggers. And it's nice to be able to say, look, don't stare at a dog, but the reality is some people are going to stare at dogs. And we need to make this dog understand that when it may be a little bit uncomfortable, that's not a reason for it to attack anyone or be extra scared of them. So we need to work through some of these issues with this dog. It's only a young dog, and I feel it's going to be very trainable and treatable to get a lot better. But uh, like a lot of young dogs, young breeds, particularly German Shepherds, they may have been brought up with um, just a lack of proper guidance and structure. No fault of the owners. They've done their absolute best and they're really good dog owners, but that's the purpose of these sessions, just educating people how to be better, what I call leaders to dogs. We can't just be friends. We've got to be a leader to a dog, particularly with a big German Shepherd. You have like a guardian-style protective dog generally, and you have to lead that dog. We shouldn't be having German Shepherds, particularly with all these anxiety and fear-based problems. We need to work through that, and it can be done. This isn't me pulling the dog around. This is a dog just not being used to being led around and not getting its own way. And that's all you're seeing here is a young dog going, hey, 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 I want to go back the other way. And we need to make this dog realize that you don't have that control anymore. So what I'm doing here is a little bit of pressure and release. See, a little bit of pressure, dog comes with me, pressure goes away. And as the session goes on, this gets much better. But again, we need to understand that you have to go through some of these elements to get the dog to the other side. That is what we need to understand. You see a little bit more touch going on here. As the session goes on, the dog gets a lot more relaxed and you're going to see me introduce him to uh, other people and other dogs and really give this owner a plan of how to move forward and how to take the power back take the power away from this dog and make him see him as more of a leader and that he is in more control of the dog. So really, this looks like you're breaking a bit of a, uh, a wild bull here. He's not used to a slip lead. Often, if you don't know what you're looking at, some people can be put out by this and you'll see the dog being all uncomfortable, but then you see it work to this level where it is now. Um, what the owners explained here, unfortunately, this young dog actually got shot. They live out on property and they didn't know he was away and the and the dog come back. And then they were walking the dog later. They noticed he was limping. 
And someone actually shot this young dog. He doesn't know who. Um, so obviously that sort of um, treatment to a dog uh, is not going to help at all when it comes to his uh, demeanour. It's certainly probably going to lack and give take some trust away. So, uh, yeah, so that's a very unfortunate. But you can see here now what we're getting to, him already starting to come around in the way of walking with me a lot better. Got a long way to go, but he's starting to realise that he doesn't have that same power he has. However, you will see when I do some training uh, later on, you'll see a little bit of, um, you see him there not liking me, force him into a sit, but what don't I do? I don't pull my hand away. I'm going to try and work through this problem. Yes, you can see the tail got underneath. Dog's not liking it. But we need to understand, if we always stop doing anything a dog doesn't like, we're not going to get anywhere. I'm not hurting this dog. All I'm asking for is him to sit. He's just protesting because he's like, who are you to tell me to sit? Well, I'm going to make you sit and we have to work through this. Remember, I've said it a couple of times already. We have to take the power away from these dogs. He can be a dog and he can be normal, but he's not allowed to react like that just when someone wants to make him sit. It's not about being cruel, but it's about just taking that power back, getting more control. And all I'm doing here is doing a bit of movement, purposely sort of just moving around, pushing him more, patting him more, rubbing his side, and really desensitising this young dog to, to realising that the people aren't against him. He doesn't need to be so fearful of people. I'm not trying to be aggressive with him, but we need to desensitize. So these are important points with dog training. Um, what I'm going to introduce here is we start doing a bit of place command, work on some foundations, and uh, we go from there. Now, after you'll see, Jeremy, when I do this uh, video with the place command here, the session where he has a little lunge at me and you'll see me jump backwards and get caught by surprise a little bit, um, which again is to be expected. But what you'll see me do after that is I do the same thing that triggered him, which is when I go to reach for the lead, he has a little sort of half lunge at me. Without the muzzle, I still don't think he would have bitten me, but it gives me the confidence better to do it. So I repeat that and I grab it again and I grab it again until I work the dog through the problem. That is the principle we need to try and do with dogs like this. You've got to find the problem, work through it. Find the problem, work through it until you can fix all these issues. So here I go ahead with the, uh, just doing a bit of foundation place command and uh, you'll see the dog have a lunge at me soon. So we'll go back to some original audio and uh, hopefully you guys get a lot out of this video, it can help with your dogs that may be fear-based reactivity, give you some tips to how to work through it with, with other dogs, with other people and uh, improve your dogs. Nope, stay. It's already dropping the lead and just using spatial pressure for the court, body language, whatever word you want to use. Yep. I watch him the second he's put into concrete, I just step at him, usher him back. Good boy. Stay, move around. Good boy. Good boy. See that little cautiousness there? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Still, hey? Now, I got to grab this thing. I had a feeling that was coming. What didn't he get there? What didn't he get? Me running back that way. I went towards him. And again, he didn't try to bite me. Not great behavior, but he didn't try to bite me. Without the muzzle, we're not getting to test. Is he actually gonna bite? We'll never know. We now know that, I'm not saying he will, but we now know that he definitely doesn't want to bite anyone. He wants people to just go away from him. Good boy, stay. So, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna try not to flinch this time. No. Good boy. He got me. Made me flinch. It is what it is. Good boy. No. Good boy. So I do it again, I do it again, I do it again. Do I teach him, buddy? Unacceptable. Okay, he's got some eyes on him. He's got a stare on him. Okay, good boy. Stay. Good boy. No. Good boy. Free. Yes. Good boy, buddy. That's better. You don't have to like me, but I'm not going to hurt you. Ash, place. Yes, good boy. Stay. So what we're doing now in the session is assessing this young shepherd's intentions towards other dogs. Does he want to play with them? Does he want to bite them? Now, a nice safe way to do that, the first step is we do this. We just assess from a distance. So a bit of a threshold, see his intentions. He's quite relaxed, he's looking, but there's nothing uh, too stressful about him, not having to hold him back. And the next part after that I like to teach is 
We want to check whether he basically, in the human terms, wants to shake hands. In other words, whether he wants to smell and scent that dog, check it out, see whether it's a female, male, anything like that. When we bring them together, we're looking to see if this dog wants to go to the back end and not to the front end to make eye contact. If that's successful, then we reverse it. Now, nothing is guaranteed in dog training. But as I say in the video here, when I've seen two dogs smell each other and check each other out and let it happen both ways, I haven't seen a dog fight go down after that because they're pretty much agreeing that they like each other and it is a good way to have a fairly close um, assessment of whether they're going to get on. So it's a nice little method here and we're going to work through that, that soon. Firstly, I'm doing a little bit of disengage when I bring him in, then I take him away, bring him in, take him away, and just to see if I can disengage him, which he did and he was fine. So now we bring him over and he wants to go to the back end, which is good. He's not looking to try and get to the front and uh, push the other dog around, uh, dominate the dog or anything like that. So we've got a nice first response, pretty relaxed body language, disengage really well, which is a great first start. And then we just reverse that. And this is a good step to do with dogs. Letting two dogs come face to face, eye to eye, when they never met, is really just waiting for a matter of when your dog's going to have a fight, not if, because it will happen. So it's not a safe way for two dogs to meet, especially when they're on lead. Leads create tension, and then you add to that tension by letting them come to face to face, eye to eye. Um, it's inevitably going to go bad. So then we reverse it. Molly doesn't really want to meet, but the thing we're looking for here is, does he want to let a dog meet him? And he does. So that's a really great second step for this. And then it's a matter of repeating that as an owner with different dogs that you feel you're safe to be around, but still never being complacent, having a muzzle involved. So now we'll go back to some original audio. What I want you to do now, Maddie, yeah. is pick his lid up and walk him. Now, he's a little reactive. He's got the muzzle on securely. Okay? Don't jump back from him. Just walk him around. Yeah. You want people like Maddie around your dog. Confident, pick up the lead. Okay, and just, just assure them, don't jump back. He might have a little bark. So he hasn't tried to bite me. Good boy, buddy. Good boy, buddy. Hey, Molly. Hey, buddy. As you walk along now, Maddie, just give him a pat along the back. Just keep walking. Beautiful. Good. It doesn't matter if he doesn't heal now, I'm not after that. Okay, so just keep him there, Phil. Straight back, turn him back around, put him back where he was. Pull his butt, grab his butt, flip him around. That really matters, Phil, okay? If you tell him to stay, it is stay. If you allow a dog to have 10 centimeters movement, you might as well allow 10 meters. Okay, I want you to think like that when it comes to him. Stay means stay. I like that this guy's all hyped up because if a dog's gonna set him off, it's gonna be this style of dog who's all energy plus. Good boy. Good, now you walk him past this dog now. Good, now come back past, turn left into him, perfect. Nice and close. Give him the leave it, relax hand. Leave it, leave it. Keep walk, beautiful, good job. Out of the way, nice, nice loose lead. Leave it. A preemptive leave it. Good job, Phil. Turn around, put him in a sit. Only ask once, his name and sit. Ash, sit. Make him do it. Guide him into position. Give him a stay. Stay. And a leave it. Remember, the leave it is a preemptive leave it. So we don't wait for him to lose himself. We let him know that we're 10 steps ahead of him. Let's go, Cyril. Good job. Good. Good boy, Ash. So let's, let's see what, that was good. So Jack was a little snarly then, but his response was perfect. Didn't do anything, didn't go back at him. So if anything, it's good to see, it's good to see, yeah, good, don't let it, that's your leg. 
it's good to see Ash um, be growled at and not respond back. He didn't fire back up. Good boy.